So today what we're going to do is section 10.6. And uh, don't write this down. Um, I'll tell you when you guys can write this down. So what we're doing is we're going to be learning about general form. So given general form, uh, tell me what type of a conic section it is. Tell me uh, to go ahead and graph it, find all the important values. As a quick review, um, what have we learned? We have learned circles. Um, this is a standard form for a circle, and you have your center here, an ellipse, standard form. Again, this tells you that, notice that these are always equal to one, and there is a plus sign here. And your uh, center is still going to be opposite of your x value right here, your hk, same here, um, in the same direction. Hyperbolas, the difference between ellipse and hyperbolas is this still is equal to one, and there is a minus sign here, okay? And in this case, for an ellipse, your A value is always gonna be your larger number. For a hyperbola, your A value um, can be your bigger number or your smaller number, doesn't really matter. And for parabolas, parabolas, this is the standard form, and then also the standard form depending on the orientation, and again, your vertex is HK and you have that for p value. All right, so now let's go back to general form. So write this down, section 10.6, general form is ax squared plus, and you can hit pause and write all this down and then come back and listen. You want? Um, it is ax squared plus bxy plus cy squared plus dx plus ey plus f is equal to zero. Then they're gonna say, okay, if you have something in general form, actually you can tell what type of a conic section it is. So for these, it seems like I wouldn't be able to tell unless it was in standard form what type of a conic section it is, but actually you can. So here's what they say. If it is written in general form, if your A and C value are equal, it's a circle. If either A or C is zero, it's a parabola. If A and C have the same sign, it's an ellipse. And if A and C have opposite signs, it's a hyperbola. Looking at your general form, your A value is the coefficient in front of your x squared term, and the c value is the coefficient in front of your y squared term. So that's what we're gonna identify on all of these. Okay, I hope you have all of this copied down now. So here it says, identify the conic section represented by each of this equation. All you have to do is find your a and your c values. So the a is the number in front of your x squared term, there is no x squared term, so our a value is zero. Our c value is the number in front of our y squared term, so our c value is six. If a is equal to zero and six and c is equal to six, which type of a conic section is this? Correct, it is a parabola. All right, try to do these, pause the video and answer these, or Mute me and just watch along. Okay. Problem, next one, problem B. Your A value is your X squared term, so A value is negative two. Your C value is the Y squared term, so your C value is three. Look at the rules. Which one is it? Opposite signs, it's a hyperbola. C, we have our x squared term is a nine. Our y squared term, or our c value is 27. Both of these have the same sign, so that is an ellipse. The next one, a value in front of the x squared term, so that's a four. C value, also a four. 
All right, so they have the same sign. So it looks like it's an ellipse. Nope. Um, they do have the same sign, but because they're actually the same value, it's actually going to be a circle. So A does equal C. This is a circle. All right, now we're going to take some of these equations from general form, um, complete the square, write it in standard form, and graph. So this problem says, identify the conic section and write it in standard form and go ahead and graph. So first, what I'm going to do is identify the conic section. My A value is the number in front of your x squared term, 1. My C value is the number in front of the y squared term, which is 1. I'm going to go back to my notes. Find them. And it says, if A and C are equal, that means that it's a circle. So I'm going to be trying to write this equation in standard form that looks something like this. So you're going to get your x's together, your y's together. Move the 18 to the other side. Leave a little bit of space right there, and then you're going to complete the square. So to complete the square, they say um, half your middle term squared. So half of negative 6 is negative 3. Negative 3 squared is 9. Whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other side. Same thing here. So half of negative 6, negative 3, negative 3 squared is 9. Add 9 to both sides. Go ahead and clean this up. You're going to rewrite this as a perfect square. Rewriting this as a perfect square. This is half your middle term. So x minus 3 squared plus y minus 3 squared equals, combine all of those, 36. So this is now your standard form for a circle. And then a couple of important information. You need to know the center. Your center is going to be at positive 3, positive 3. The radius is the square root of 36. So 6 units north, well, north, south, west, and east. North, west, whatever. Okay. Six units each direction from your circle. And you're going to go ahead and try to make a nice circle as best you can. So there's my center. And this is not going to come out good. But you get the idea. Okay, and again, if you don't have graph paper, you're just making like that nice kind of grid that just looks um, like a good circle and go from there, okay? All right, next problem. All right, next problem. So for this one, what we're gonna do, oh, and this is problem three, I guess. You're gonna do the same thing. You're going to identify the conic section, uh, write it in standard form, and graph. So let's identify our conic section first. Our A value is nine. Our C value is the number from our y squared term. It's five. Going back to my notes, I have a nine and a five. They're not equal. One of them's not zero. They do have the same sign. So this is actually going to be an ellipse. All right, and to refresh my memory, I'm gonna go back to my notes and say, okay, the equation for an ellipse is gonna look something like this. And again, it's going to equal one. We're gonna go ahead and complete the square for that. So you get your x's together. your y's together, there's only that, and your constant on the other side. Okay, looks good. You cannot complete the square if this is not a one coefficient. So the very first thing you have to do is you have to factor out a nine. So what's in common between your x's and the nine? So factor out a nine, you're left with x squared plus two x. Complete the square for this. So you're saying, um, just looking at that part right there, half of two is one, one squared is one. So you're gonna add one to this side. Whatever you do to one side, you have to add to the other side. So what number am I gonna be adding here? 
Remember, this you're adding one here, but this is really 9x squared, 18x and 9, so you're adding a 9 over here. Rewrite it as a perfect square, so 9x plus 1 squared. And if you're stuck on how to go from here to here, it's two numbers that multiply to get one and add to get two. Or you can always say it's going to be half that middle term. All right, looks good, except um, this has to equal one. In order for that to equal one, you're going to divide by what number? Yeah, 45. And when you divide by 45, it goes under every single term. And then you're gonna go ahead and reduce. Nine goes into 45 five times. 5 goes into 45 9 times. All right, so this looks good. Now I'm going to find my center. I'm going to go ahead and make my graph. Okay, so I'm going to make a quick graph. My center is the opposite of x and opposite of this. So center is at negative 1, 0. Go ahead and graph that, negative 1, 0. Now an ellipse, the number under the x is going to tell you how much you move from the center horizontally. The number under the y is gonna tell you how much you move from the center vertically. Well, this one's easy. Square root of nine is three. So I'm going to move three units vertically. And up and down, no, okay. And, ooh, what's this one gonna be? This is gonna be square root of five. What is the square root of five? Um, 2.2, 2.23, 2.24, 2 we'll say. Okay, it's about two and a quarter. So two and a quarter units horizontally from your center. All right, is this one oriented vertically or horizontally? It's definitely oriented vertically because you can see that this is a little bit bigger. So, and again, don't laugh at my graphs. You want to make it cross all of them. Okay, good. All right, next problem. All right, so our next problem, the same thing. Given this equation in general form, identify the conic section, rewrite it in standard form, and graph. So we can see that our a value is the number in front of our x squared term is 4. Our C value is the number in front of our y squared term, which is negative one. Going back, looking at my notes, they're not the same, one's not zero. Um, they don't have the same sign. They do have opposite signs. So this is definitely going to be a hyperbola. All right, so to write it in standard form, you're gonna go ahead and do the same thing. Get your x's together, get your y's together. This one's actually a little tricky. So we're gonna put our x's together Our y's together, the nine is already on the other side. Again, you cannot complete the square if this does not have a one coefficient. So we're gonna factor out whatever goes into four and negative eight. It is four, so four x squared minus two x. This one, I'm gonna kinda do the same. Um, this minus, I'm going to go ahead and factor that out. So it's a minus. This becomes a positive y squared, and this would become a negative 6y. And that's the only part that students will miss is when you have the hyperbola to factor out that negative right there. Then you're going to go ahead and complete the square. So now I'm going to complete the square for the x's. Half of negative 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is one. If I'm adding one here, what will I be adding to the other side? Nice. Okay, same thing, gonna complete the square for the y's. Half of negative six is negative three. Um, negative three squared is nine, so you're adding nine here. And what will I be adding to this side? This is actually a negative nine because the nine was positive here, so you have a negative nine. Okay, clean it up, rewrite it as a perfect square. So you have four x minus one squared minus y minus three squared equals whatever that turns out to be. So that's four. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and sketch that graph. 
Okay, and so again, this is a hyperbola and a hyperbola in standard form should look like this. Does it look like that? <laughs> no, I forgot to divide by one. So go ahead and make sure you finish that problem. Divide through by, um, this number needs to be a one. So what are you gonna multiply, divide through in order to make that a one? Good, and then you divide it by four on everything. Go ahead, reduce. Cancel, so it's just one. You don't have to write the one, but you can. Okay, now I'm happy because now this is in standard form. Now, a lot of things to know about uh, this equation in standard form for a hyperbola. First, we need to know the center. All right, I got that. So the center is one, positive one, positive three. You guys are good at that. This is a part that's, um, do you guys remember, would this be a hyperbola oriented horizontally or oriented vertically? Well, it's actually going to be horizontally. How can you tell? If your x squared term is positive, it's gonna be oriented horizontally. If your y squared was positive, um, then it's going to be oriented vertically. So on your notes you have, if your x squared is positive, it's oriented horizontally. And if it's the y squared is positive, it'll be oriented vertically. All right, so let's get to the graph. So I have my center at one, th uh, one three. So graphing it over one up three. And then from the center, this is going to tell you um, the distance that you move along in the x direction. So square root of one is one. Okay, and this is gonna create our little rectangle box. And actually, you know it's gonna be looking like this already. This is gonna tell you how much you move vertically. So square root of four is two. So two units here. And then what you're supposed to do is make that rectangle as your guide. You do know that this is the vertex because it's oriented horizontally. And then let me get my ruler and make my guide. connecting just the corners of that box. And then to draw your hyperbola, you use your vertex and you use those lines as the guide. As a reminder, you could, um, these are your asymptotes that you could actually find the equation for. You'd put it in point slope and this would have a slope of um, two over one, but we're just doing this part for the graph. Okay, one more problem. All right, our last problem. So this one is gonna say the same thing. Go ahead and um, given the equation in general form, identify the type of conic section, rewrite it in standard form, and go ahead and graph. So first, we're gonna find our A value. Um, which is the number in front of our x squared term is one, and then our c value is a number in front of our y squared. There is no y squared, so our c value is zero. And do you guys have that memorized? Do you know what that is, or do you need to refer back to your notes? So I have a is one and c is zero. Well, one of them is zero, so this has to be a parabola. All right, so the conic section is a parabola. Then I just have to rewrite it in um, standard form. Now, as a reminder, what is that gonna look like? Okay, so you either have the y squareds or the x squareds. So that goes on one side and everything else goes on the other side. Well, is this gonna be an x squared problem or a y squared problem? Correct, it's an x squared. So we get all the x's on one side and all everything else on the other side. So I have an x squared, no other x's, move everything to the other side. 
All right, looks good. Last thing you wanna do is because um, in this form, see how it's factored out. So you wanna factor this out and four goes into both of those. All right, that is your standard form. And then you just find all the information. Well, you know your center, or because it's a parabola, I always say center, but it's your vertex. Your vertex is at zero positive one. And you know it's opening like this. Other information that um, you could do is finding your focus point, your axis of symmetry, and all that. So for us right now, that's all you need to know um, is this. Oh, how did I know it was opening up? Well, this right here is your p-value, so we can say set 4p equal to that. Solve it for p. So in this case, that means that one unit, um, so x squared implies that it's either opening up or down. A positive p-value tells you that it's going to be opening up. Okay. Um, this tells you the distance from your vertex is one unit, and that's gonna give you your coordinates for your focus point. The same distance outside of your parabola is going to be your equation for your directrix. And then this right here will be your equation for your axis of symmetry. And I'm not gonna write all the information down, but that's what you would do. That's it.